So I was about to start a project the other day that needed the soldering iron when I noticed it doesn't work. As I'm a helpful kind of guy, I thought I'd document it for you as it might help somebody out. Plus the info might be transferable to other situations as it's basic fault finding. INTRO! So to get started, I'm going to look at checking this in sections. First stop will be the plug, then I'll check the lead, and finally the soldering iron itself. This is an English plug which might look a bit strange if you live outside of the UK and you've never seen one before. It has three wires, live, neutral and earth. It also has a 13 amp fuse. But I don't want you to get hung up on how it looks, the value of the plug or the colour of the wires if yours is different. Some of these checks should pass over to what you're looking at. Unscrewing the single screw that holds the cover on will allow you to open the plug in half exposing the wires and fuse. Be careful not to lose the screw as you'll need it later. Lucky for me, my type of plug has a screw that's designed to stay in the case even when it's undone. Looking inside the soldering iron plug we see three wires. Earth which is green and yellow, the neutral which is blue and the live which is brown. Now again the colours in your plug may vary. Even in England this colour scheme used to be green for earth, black for neutral and red for live. A quick tip I always use on how to remember which colour is live and which colour is neutral is the same brown bread as in touch the brown and your brown bread. Or if it's the old black and red scheme, I use red and you're dead. Different people have different terms for the live and neutral. For example, hot and cold. It's all a matter of preference on what works for you. Inside the soldering iron plug, I'm looking for burn marks, frayed wire, maybe a loose connection. And then when I see everything looks okay, I finally take a look at the fuse. I'm going to be using a digital multimeter and setting it to the buzz test, which is checking for continuity. Or in plain English, making sure there isn't a break in the electrical connection that I'm checking. Inside the fuse is a tiny wire which burns out if it's blown, in which case I just replace it for the same rating. But this fuse is okay so I'll check the lead to the soldering iron. To get to the connectors on the cable we have to disassemble the soldering iron case by undoing this little plastic grub screw and then sliding off the protective grip. Now I remove this little plastic cover before gently wiggling off the earth spade connection. As you can see we have the same three colours of wire as at the plug which makes checking them really easy. I test earth at the plug and at the soldering iron, then neutral the same way, and lastly the live wire. With all three wires buzzing when I check them, I know they don't have a break in them. If they did, I would just replace the length of broken cable. The only thing left to check, and thereby the fault in this case, is the heating element. And I want you to appreciate the irony that the wires connecting the element to the cable are soldered, so I'd need a spare soldering iron to solder on a new replacement. The heating element is basically just a coil of wire, so we use the same buzz test and it makes no noise. So I know that it's had its day. If the manufacturer of this soldering iron had replacements, I could just replace the thing, but they don't, probably because they want me to buy a new unit. This kind of basic fault finding might help you in different circumstances and help you track down faulty components to replace, rather than shelling out for a new device. Unless of course the manufacturer doesn't sell spares, like in my case.